In this episode of Mind Pump. Oh, the Mind Pump. Yes, we are the premier health and fitness podcast. However, we do like to have a good time here. In the first 34 minutes of this episode, we have some casual banter between Justin and Adam. Yeah, no sound. Um, yes, he is missing today, but he will be joining us later for the questions. The episode starts out with Justin demonstrating his tongue dexterity. Whoa, buddy. Don't act like you're not impressed, Doug. <laughs> I was, indeed. Blah, blah, blah. Then the conversation goes into Sal's replacement because, as you will notice, he is missing and we need to find somebody to replace him. Yeah. We talked about the episode for season three of Westworld and some interesting speculation there. We also talk about the coronavirus and the stress this uh, virus has inflicted on so many of us, which brings us to, guess what, Justin? What's that? Everly Well. Oh, yeah. So Everly Well right now is offering a stress test for 30% off. Now, Everly Well is a company that specializes in at-home testing kits such as testosterone, cholesterol, all that stuff. But this month, they're offering 30% off of their at-home stress test. You can get that over at everlywell.com. That's spelled E-V-E-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L.com. And use the code MINDPUMP to get that discount. And they also offer 25% off of all their other tests. Use this time to maximize your sleep, everybody. Next up in this conversation, we had Adam's top 10 list. Adam talks about 10 different things you can do at home while you're homebound because of this coronavirus situation. None of them were masturbating. Surprising. <laughs> Next up is he talks about Tom Brady and uh, some speculations there. Talk about cruise ships, how they may want to get bailed out, but they haven't been paying many taxes. Oh, man, they're floating cesspools. And then we get into the question portion of this episode. The first question, is going to failure a beneficial thing to do every once in a while? If so, how often should you do that? The next question is about the term big bone. Is that actually a thing or is it just an excuse to eat a lot of food? I think it's an excuse, Doug. The next question is about the Jefferson curl. If you've seen this one, it's really quite an interesting way to contort your body. Is it safe? Is it something that you should use? The guys talk about that. And then the final question, what are some tips for mental exhaustion you'll be getting from the gym or, in this case, probably now from your home workouts? By the way, one of the things that uh, we decided to do, this was uh, totally out of the normal for us. We normally run a sale all month long. One program, uh, like this month, has been power lift. But uh, obviously, the coronavirus has hit uh, a lot of us really hard. Uh, most people are now being uh, confined to their homes, and a lot of people are scrambling on what do they do in order to stay healthy and stay fit. Uh, we created a program, Maps Anywhere. It's a no-equipment-required program. Incredible. Uh, we've decided to put that half off right now, and we're going to run that at least until the end of the month to help out all those that are looking to stay fit and work out without any equipment. Yeah, and to get the program, go to mapswhite.com. That's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E dot com and use the code WHITE50. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0 for the discount. 1,000 warriors in full battle array, eight brass monkeys from the ancient sacred crypts of Egypt, nine sympathetic, apathetic, diabetic, old men in rollerblades with a defined propensity towards procrastination and sloth, ten lyrical, spherical, diabolical Denzians of the deep who waltz around quo-key and quiv all at the same time. Damn! <laughs> wow. Impressive. <laughs> wow. Do you know what? We don't need fucking yeah. Sal. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work on my silver tongue. Man, I, we should, uh, we got to tell the audience, um... You know, Sal was up on his five-year contract, just uh, <laughs> came up. And, we had him on lease. And, uh, you know, we just, we didn't have the budget to re-sign him. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, and, you know, after we it's met. unfortunate. We met with the board and everybody said that Justin was their favorite. So we knew we had to allocate <laughs> most of our funds that way. Naturally. And, uh, you know, we figured Sal, if one of us could just bring some studies to this conversation every once in a while, we yeah. should be okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's a bit of a load that we're going to have to carry on our back uh, for now. But, uh, you know, eventually I think we might find somebody that could carry that. Well, so speaking of that, uh, here's 
here's some of Sal's possible replacements. So I wanted to. Oh my God, you've thought about this already. Well, That's no, we great. didn't just th- we didn't just think about it. So we, recent. This is uh, these are possible free agents that okay. are coming up. So uh, number one on the list, we have Lewis Howes. <laughs> Lewis Howes. Yeah, well, what do you yeah. think of that? I, I don't know about uh, how that's going to blend well with our, our, our style. I, I don't want to talk about puppies All right. uh, the whole time. Uh, number two is Aubrey Marcus. Okay. I see a potential for us to talk about very bizarre uh, ayahuasca-esque uh, ideas. Maybe we could paint. Yeah, maybe we could get like a mushroom sponsor by then, huh? Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, number three, Mike Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're just insulting me. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> Don't insult me. Uh, number four, uh, the uh, infamous Steve Cook from The Biggest Loser. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely made an impact on that show. Uh, bring up. Was our, it good? I don't know. We'll bring up our handsome points. Well, we definitely will be handsome on social media. Yeah. We could use that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could just have use those sit, points. It would just sit there, run the camera on him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to talk. Look, to he's you. handsome. We get it. Everybody, just <laughs> check him out. Anyways, let's uh, <laughs> let, let's throw some facts in there. Well, we could exploit him. I don't know. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Five. Bradley Martin. Oh, man. I don't think anything's going on with Culture Cast. I think it's kind of plateaued over there, so he's looking for options. I mean, he's a buff guy. I mean, we've kind of dwindled down over the years here, so yeah, you know, maybe you'll help us with our lifting weights uh, and getting attention that way. I, know, I don't like bringing on anybody, though, that's stronger than we are, so that's my problem. Yeah, I don't one. like that either. It's, uh, you know. And then our last free, tricky. free agent option is Jillian Michaels. No. <laughs> That's a hard no? It's a hard no. Not at all? No. I mean, everybody keeps telling us that we need more girls involved in this. Yeah. I mean, I could see that in terms of diversifying our, our conversations a bit. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I think it would get way away from us real fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's just not, it's not smart. It's not smart business. How's uh, how's the family handling everything that's going on right now? Uh, I mean, they're obviously every, everybody's off school and uh you know they're they're at home and uh, hopefully we can get them up here with us right now but uh yeah they're doing fine i mean it's it, it seems like it's it's this like staycation is, is sort of the thing right now right it, it's lockdowns happening in santa cruz area in the bay area everybody's sort of like just kind of confined and uh hanging out well so. that, that's the real reason why sal's not with us today so uh just joking around about him not being yeah, we're not we're not losing Sal. Yeah, the, of course yeah, not. Don't get crazy. No, we're all we're all connected. Uh, he he actually though you know probably should have got a different car. We uh, <laughs> we came up to Tahoe, get away at the Tahoe place, and record maybe hang out here for a week or whatever. This was planned on the schedule for a couple weeks. Uh, he was coming behind us, and this literally the timing of this is crazy. It's right when uh, Santa Cruz, San Jose, San Francisco went to full on lockdown. And we are already up here. Plus, we are right in the middle of a storm. So there's like a good five feet of snow outside of our house right now. And I oh, it's beautiful and majestic up here, man. It's like I'm trying to get everybody up here just so that way we can actually enjoy it. Uh, but uh, this has been interesting. This is the first time we've used this studio, yeah, which is pretty exciting, actually. I know, too bad for he doesn't get, you know what, though? That's what he gets for buying an Infinity. I don't think that thing would have made it up here. So, <laughs> yeah, all wheel drive, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, still a bit risky, right? I don't know, not with that. Co- the, the, the ground coverage is what maybe six inches on that thing. There's no oh, way yeah. he's uh, getting up here with all the snow up here. Oh, those embankments, we were already like doing a little off roading on the way up here. It got pretty sketchy, so yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're all, uh, you know, we're like the, the four amigos with Doug, right? Yeah. Um, and anytime one of us uh, is is missing, it's just not the same. So we no. absolutely do miss out. But we do recognize that there are so, there are some perks to this. One of those being uh, last night, the television selection or the movie selection, <laughs> we got to watch Westworld. Yes. And I still cannot believe this motherfucker does not watch this show. This show is like it's so insulting to me. Like, uh, like, dude, it was epic. I, I don't know how you felt about the very first episode of season, what is it, season three now? Yeah. Um, I was just, like, so excited about it because it took you from the actual Westworld, like, uh, the what they created with that to now the real world, uh, the future real world that they have created with that. I thought they did an amazing job with that in terms of the type of technology and things they showed and kind of where... You know, things would progress naturally from what we see already today. Well, you're the biggest sci-fi nerd probably out of all of us. Is is that what makes a good sci-fi? Is something that is most realistic or the furthest fetched or the best gra- – I mean, what makes 
a great sci-fi. Now, when I watch Westworld, um, and, and I'm probably out of out of the three of us, I'm probably the least geeky when it comes to watching sci-fi movies. Mm. But I absolutely love it because when I watch it, I feel like I see the stuff that they put out there, and I go, "Fuck that! That could happen. That's possible, right?" Yeah, that's that's my favorite sci-fi. Uh, is definitely like a Minority Report and things out there that are um, trying to kind of press our ideas and stretch them out and see uh, what that looks like. And so it's like you put visuals out there of ideas that um, you know people that are innovating different technologies out there. Like how how does that look and how does that interact in society and culture and you, I saw some cool things, and there are there are going to be a bit of spoilers in this. So if you have, if you haven't seen the first episode, then uh, you might want to fast forward a little bit of this part. But uh, there's just some technology I wanted to address that they. Oh, I think you should. It doesn't even matter if you give this. Here's the thing. I I had to go back. I know <laughs> and watch some of season two. Yeah. Because of the gap between season two and season three was so long, and then the 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 plot is so deep. Yeah. And they play with so much. Uh, back and forth of the well, with this was something there a memory or is this happening currently right now so i had to wa- i had to go back and watch about four or five episodes from uh the, the recap just wasn't enough for me yeah. and then last night we watched uh the season 3 uh episode 1 all together and i i'm still i'm going to go back and watch it again because there's so much stuff so i don't yeah. think even you giving away some of the, the no, stuff you're right the stuff that was happening like for example there was a there's a part in there where you know I had to ask you what he was doing, and I would have not have known had you not told me, and that's only because you watched the director's cut afterwards, where he's scrolling through and yeah. picking crimes to do. Yeah, so uh, cryptocurrency, the, they're kind of playing with the idea of uh, you know having a, a separate way to uh, you know earn income, and and uh, there's an app that uh, some people have access to that can basically you can opt into like a specific type of a crime that you know you ha- there's levels of it so basically like the new character that they show opts in to like these petty crimes and like you know uh burglary and like you know petty theft kind of stuff versus uh, doing personals where like they kidnap or they like kill people or all that he's like i don't want anything to do with that kind of stuff and and you could see how they organize really efficiently with other people that use the app and so it's this whole ring that they get around this this uh, algorithm that basically what you find out is this this whole like mother AI uh, has been able to sort of uh, you know outline uh, like what everybody should do for a living like how they should live their lives like everybody's sort of dependent on this AI to kind of dictate what they should do with their life well this is why I think that I mean, I think it was what maybe a year ago when we were talking a lot more about cryptocurrency when it was getting all popular and it was skyrocketing part of the reason why i had i had bought some uh cryptocurrency was for this exact reason is whether we decide to adopt this as uh, uh for everybody to be able to use and as a a, a new form of money and a money transfer mm-hmm. 100% uh the black market will still use this because of the bi- the, the inability for people to trace yeah uh who's giving it to who you can remain anonymous for th- for things like this that's why i like so watching the show like that like and that wasn't even a, a concept or an idea that i thought of i like it, just from my little experience in being in a gray market time with with medical marijuana coming on the scene and seeing a lot of the black market still and knowing how people were exchanging funds and the and the all the shit that went on back there, mm-hmm. I saw the opportunity for cryptocurrency just in that itself. My mind didn't even go to a place like this, and that's what I mean. There were so many things that they had on the show that I was yeah. Like, oh shit! I didn't even oh, think of that. One of my favorites was when you and and you actually pointed this out to me the second time. I thought that it was a flashback of him having a conversation on the phone with somebody that uh, is from his past so uh, he went through a traumatic experience and again this is where the kind of spoilers happen but um he was uh, involved in military activity like his friend dies anyways you find out that he's talking to his friend in this earpiece and i i think that it's his mind is talking to this 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 earpiece that's kind of picking up on his thoughts 
Um, that's like basically it's a it's an AI version of his friend, right? Like to it has help him like with therapy, predictive algorithms, right? Yeah. And we were talking last night, speculating on this, how crazy this is that this is going this is going to be possible. Think about uh, like think of us right now, the amount of uh, of words that that we've spoken on the podcast alone, the amount of yeah. written content that we've done on blogs and emails and social and imagery and everything that's connected to us imagine 20 years more or 40 years more from now we pass on and our our well, our sons will have this would could have potentially this ability to download almost like our consciousness and not quite our consciousness but our our personality and predictive sure the way we respond the way do we talk about things like they actually i was reading a bit more about some of this technology and they uh, they speculate that uh, storing um, the equivalent of human brains would be potentially be like 50 years out. So they think that they'd be able to, obviously there's going to be, uh, you, you know, a lot to that in terms of like uh, the bandwidth that that would take. And uh, the brain is much more complex. It's not like a computer. So there's a lot that they still have to work, you know, in that direction, but that would be the ultimate, right? Is to get all these data points uh, in the way that I, you, you inflect, the you know the way that you respond and, and answer questions, what you're into, all that kind of stuff, like feeds into this algorithm that then can carry on. It'd be such a trip, right? Your your kid can still talk to you after you've deceased. Uh, you know, there's lots of like interesting ideas that would lead in that direction. I didn't even think, uh, you know, after watching that show, that made me start thinking about it. Well, the thing you have to think about too is the and speculate on is. Would it necessarily be a good idea, though? Right? Like it's it's to me, it sounds amazing. Like somebody who's lost his father, uh, if yeah, it's seven years old, right? So imagine me as a grown man now. If if we had the technology we have today, if I was able to, you know, put an earpiece in and have this conversation that feels like I'm really speaking to my father. I mean, I to me that sounds like no brainer. I would. Well, pay whatever it would be amazing to have yeah. access to something like that but then i think of like i think how they were using it on the show where it was like a therapy for him like his his, his you know his brother or his best friend dies and he's mourning his death and so part of the the therapy is that he's able to communicate with him uh i wonder if that technically would help people move on longer or that would keep you hanging on yeah right yeah i wonder about that too because it, it would be a comforting thing and it'd be hard to get rid of the comfort of that. Right. Yeah. So, and, and imagine I, losing like a spouse or somebody really close to you, burying yourself into that and like not coming out because you don't want, you, you, you want to hang on to the last piece and that's the closest piece you have to him or her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I imagine that's going to be a new, especially if that's out, it, that'll be a new struggle for people is like, how do you move on? Like, how do you accept death? Uh, you know, at certain points, like we, they're already working on ways to slow the aging process. They're trying to download consciousness. Like there's lots of, uh, ed, you know, people working on this as we speak to try and solve whatever they think is like, they think death is, is an illness at this point that we need to solve. Right. Right. Well, speaking of moving on, are you, uh, what are you hearing right now through, uh, messages that you're getting and friends like with this, with the coronavirus going on, are, are you feeling that people are starting to turn a, more positive attitude about everything and, and look at the silver lining and things or do you feel mm. that there people are still freaking out and it's getting worse yeah i think it varies still because um we're finding out uh some businesses have obviously had to shut down and so i think that that presents a new challenge for some people that are living paycheck to paycheck and are uncertain about uh, when they're going to be able to open up shop and everything again. And so, but for the most part, most of the people I know that are relatively okay and financially are, you know, we're, do they're doing okay. And they're actually like trying to use this as an outlet to be productive in other ways. And like, uh, uh, you know, whether that's working out and, and really working on their body or like reading and, you know, like getting into like, skills like for myself uh it, if i wasn't doing this right now i would be trying to really get back on my chops on guitar and start like reigniting that passion of mine and right, i right. know some of my friends have kind of gone that direction get back into music and uh something some kind of outlet that's going to keep you busy i mean we're like cooped up uh you know and confined right now so might as well make the most of it right i feel like a lot of people are stressing out and don't realize that 
that can be more detrimental to protecting them than anything else. Yeah, stress is definitely one of those things that will exacerbate the problem for sure. What? Which, by the way, is a very perfect time to bring up what Everly Wells doing right now. Oh, yeah. oh man, <laughs> I wish we had Sal calling in. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, Doug, we, Doug's the pitch man. I'm the pitch man today because Everly Well, of course, yeah, everybody's a, a little bit stressed and on edge right now. And what they're offering exclusively to Mind Pump listeners is 30% off of any order that includes a sleep and stress test. Oh, I didn't even know they had that. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that either, new, right? Is, Oh, it is new. I think it's new, and it, it covers like four different uh, the, of, the, of the sleep hormones. Yeah, so hormones. it's a panel that measures the levels of cortisol, cortisone, melatonin, and creatinine at four points throughout the day. So it'd be morning, afternoon, evening, and night. I was just going to say, they have to do it multiple times. It wouldn't make sense to do it one time because that, that could easily change. Yeah, it fluctuates. Right, correct. And the collection method is urine, so it's easy. Oh, wow. You're, you're probably peeing four times a day, right? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, oh, for that's... Adam, it's at least 20. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what it does is- It's got a small bladder. Evaluates the fluctuations of hormones needed for a restful night's sleep. And that way you can determine actually why you're not getting a good night's sleep. Good timing on this oh, too, great. since we've been talking a lot about- We just, what, did, last week or the week before we did an episode on- Talking about cortisol junkies, people that yeah. are hyped up on tons of caffeine and then not able to sleep and how much that plays- uh, a role in your guys' recovery and building muscle and burning body fat. And we've talked a lot about sleep rituals and how to improve that to get deeper sleep. And, you know, this would be just another way to then like measure that and yeah. test it out, which is a pretty cool offering for that. That's great. That's well, so think about that though. Right now is a perfect time to work on getting better sleep. I know. You know, if, if people, if we could just like, uh, you know, relieve a lot of this, this, outside stress and just focus in on you know yourself your family and like uh, how to improve your own health like that's that's going to be the best oh you just reminded me so so i made this uh we're gonna call it uh adam's uh top 10 coronavirus list here okay? oh yeah so i i made a i was reading a bunch of different articles of like you know because of course right now everybody is uh locked up um most um, most people are lost with what should i do yeah i've got a couple of friends that want to they played monopoly and, yeah. and almost killed each other <laughs> yeah right like 20 I've, times already. i've got some people that got their kids and they're freaking out like i don't know if i could be in this house with my kids locked up <laughs> for the next three weeks yeah so i you know i was i was searching like all these different things that that we can do so i made a, a list of of what i thought were my favorite top 10 uh things that i read so uh the first one i thought was really cool so the, the number one thing that i i put on this list was uh, virtual mu museum tours around the world. What? So you can like, yeah, uh, it's called Google Art and Culture, and I think there, I th I believe there's uh, hundreds that you can do, but you can take virtual tours of museums all over the world. Dude, that that's awesome. Right. So wow. I think, I mean, how cool is that? Sit down with uh, your significant other or even your kids and uh, crack open a bottle of wine and throw right, it up on the big right, screen. Right. Yeah. Right. So I thought. And speaking of cracking, so my second one was. Uh, have a fancy picnic in your living room uh, while, while supporting a local restaurant. So mm. uh, a lot of the companies like uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, um, they're offering like these no contact drop. We saw this last night. We went over to our clubhouse here uh, where our, our place is and there's like a, a bar and grill in there. And uh, they're encouraging people not to come into the restaurant. One of the ways they're doing that is you can call in, they'll have the food and they'll actually come outside, drop it off. So you just pick it up with your car and then drive back to yeah. your house. So, uh, you know, setting something up like a, a fancy picnic in your living room, being oh. uh, being creative. Be creative, be romantic. Right, uh, right. Yeah, that's and, not a bad idea. And order out. And then, I mean, and encouraging people to order, obviously, from you. Obviously, if you go Grubhub or one of those, you have to go local restaurants, which I think right now uh, it's a great time for uh, local businesses to try and support each other mm -hmm. uh, during this time. So I think that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Um, also, uh, here's a third one attend, uh, attend or host if, you're, uh, if you play. Uh, an online uh, concert. Uh, and I think you brought this yes. up. I heard you talking about this, and this is what made me yeah. go down this Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody, by the way. I know this is probably the next day, but uh, right now it is. And uh, speaking of that, so the Dropkick Murphys, one of my favorite bands, they they always crush it on, on St. Patrick's Day, and they have throw a big, huge concert. And so obviously they've, they've canceled their live performance where they're going to bring a lot of people in, but decided to now live stream it. 
So hopefully you guys caught wind of this. I know it's in the news a bit, uh, but they're going to offer that out so people can watch, you know, a live stream concert of them uh, for the festivities. Pretty cool. So something that we're going to do with uh, our family. Um, so for Christmas, I got all of my my uh, my my mom, my sister, all my family members. I, I got them all Facebook portals. Uh, and you can do this with zoom. My buddies are doing this with zoom. They did this yesterday. They did like a hangout with all of us. Uh, so this is another, a cool creative thing you could do is, uh, log into like a zoom account if you have Facebook portals, but just do like a online dinner party where you have the t- mount either mounted on the TV or on a laptop. And then you all have like, so a, you got, you got your family member represented as a yes, TV screen yes, here as a yes. laptop over here. I, it seems ridiculous <laughs> and crazy, but I mean, what a time to have fun with these, these things that we have the yeah. capabilities to do with tech. Uh, so I thought that was creative. Um, you got to explain those more. Cause like, I, I don't know if everybody knows what a, a Facebook portal is and it was like pretty cool. Uh, what you could do more than just like a FaceTime. It actually, Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's so I, they have multiple ones, right? They have the, they have like a, an iPad one, a picture frame size one, and then they have the one that mounts on your TV. So I bought the ones that mount on your TV. So, you know, I have a big screen TV and my li- and the way my my living room is set up, it's like my living room, my dining room, my kitchen. It's all in one long row, right? So it's so I can have this on my TV. I could be in the dining room, I can be in the kitchen, and it the thing, the camera actually uh, follows, tracks me. So I could be like, you know, taking Max and we have a Max's portable crib is up there too. So it could be pulling him out of his portable crib. We could be cooking dinner. We could be sitting down eating dinner and the camera. You're always in screen. Yeah, I'm way. always yeah. in screen and it follows us uh, wherever we're at. And then it projects, you know, if I'm talking to my mom or my sister, their image like FaceTime on the big screen TV. So you're seeing like, I get to see them on. The yeah, that's massive. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they, they're relatively inexpensive. They're pretty expensive. So they're, I mean, they're not that bad. They, I, I think I got them at 150 a piece. Mm. They did a thing when they first launched. I, I missed out. I think they sold them for like 50 bucks uh, oh. when they first dropped, but they sold out. Like it, I actually just got my, I finally got them because I, they were Christmas gifts that I originally got, but they were sold out for so long that I didn't get them till like weeks after Christmas. So my family barely just got theirs from, in fact, my sister, I'm she's still waiting to get uh, mailed from me. Yeah. I got to get me some of those for sure. But so that, that's a cool thing to do. Right. Uh, an obvious one, I think, uh, dive into a good book. Um, mm-hmm. if you, you haven't been reading, uh, this is a great excuse to dive into, uh, some material. We had, we had some people, uh, in our community that, that were trained. We have a large, obviously trainer following, and a lot of them use this opportunity to kind of educate themselves on mobility. They right. they're going through our they either owned Prime and Prime Pro already, or they decided to go through it and like yeah. elevate actually, your knowledge, and then you can bring that back to your clients and you know really enhance your experience with your clients too. It's a perfect opportunity for that. Yeah, and, and you know, and this was something that I actually had I had wrote uh, well before I even got the news this morning. I was on the phone with our marketing team. Uh, it got uh, just released uh, via email. And we're doing uh, both our Prime and Prime Pro, which are at home, don't require any equipment, Mm -hmm. uh, programs that you can do for mobility and corrective exercise and addressing joint pain. Uh, Those are all half off right now, too. So, I mean, if you're somebody, if you're a trainer, highly recommend using uh, that time to go through that. This is also something that we've encouraged a lot of trainers that are uh, like, what the hell do I do right now? My clients aren't showing up to appointments. My gym Mm -hmm. is closed down trying to get creative ways that you can still generate revenue for your business and support your clients. Uh, one of the things that I've been encouraging a lot of the trainers that I mentor is this is a great time to pivot to like a maps prime pro, which is like all corrective exercise stuff, mobility for each. We, we address every joint in the body and we go through uh, uh, mobility exercises for each joint. And so walking your client through virtually, um, incredible session, they'll they'll love it. It's uh, something they probably should have been doing anyways. And then now that you guys are limited to uh, being at home, I think it's a great resource to be able to do that. Yeah. Was that the last one or do you have any more on that no, list? No, no, no. I've, I've got a couple more. I get 10. So I have oh, 10 on sweet. the list. That's only like five or six right there. Uh, and then spring cleaning, you start early. So <laughs> get on, you get on your spring cleaning, get that get, shit over with. get it, get that done. Yeah. Uh, to that point, as far as starting things early, uh, I, I never do this. This is something now because of, if we're going to literally be cooped up for maybe three weeks, this is on my list now, uh, is to actually start, uh, Christmas shopping early and the, and you could do everything online. Wow, dude. You're going to see a lot of business. And here's my reason why I like this one a lot too, is, uh, my theory is 
a lot of businesses are going to be suffering because of this, uh, mm-hmm. because of the big scare. Everybody is going to hoard money, and you're going to see a lot of businesses trying to pivot and figure out ways to drive revenue. The best way that a lot of companies can do that is by offering great deals or discounts or specials. So I think uh, online shopping, uh, for those of you that have have the abilities to either one, still have income or have been uh, making uh, made enough money that you have a nice nest egg, it's going to be a great opportunity to shop online. Yeah. Um, And then here's another one that I thought was really dope. This, if I had these, these aren't technically in order. This probably would it be in my top three because I didn't know this was uh, something they offered. So there are over 400 free classes that you can get from Ivy League schools. Oh, and really? yeah, it's called classcentral.com. And you, everything you could probably think of, and they're completely free. It's online, and you're talking Is about- it like video lectures? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And then the last one, my 10th, of course, uh, shameless plug, Maps Anywhere. I mean, uh, probably one of our sleeper programs of all our programs. A lot of people, I think, uh, because the the image on the front has a girl holding a yoga mat. So I think a lot of guys look at it and go, oh, this isn't tough enough for me. I think a lot of people think it's not a great program to build muscle. It's a phenomenal program mm-hmm. to do that. It's We've we scaled it, too, to where whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, you have the uh, you have the ability to start at one of those levels. Yeah, it could be corrective, or you could ramp it up to like incredibly difficult, challenging, intense like body weight exercises. Primarily, the the focus is body weight and also bands. Uh, we did have a little bit of isometric type exercises in there too, which are incredibly difficult once you get into them. That's what I always found with a lot of my clients. Were like, wow, I didn't realize you know how strenuous that was to like hold that pose and then really squeeze my way through it and. Uh, it, it, it's funny because like it it doesn't sound like the sexiest program or the most uh, doesn't have the most appeal, but like in these circumstances, it makes so much sense. Like oh yeah, you know, like it, it's it's very minimalist and it's it, it it is it's very effective. So did you see the other thing on TV right now? That the 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 two most popular things on television, obviously number one, coronavirus. You know what the number two one is? Uh, no, Tom Brady. Oh, Tom Brady. He is, bro. Oh, Everywhere. If can, he, can we convert him to do podcasting? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll throw him on that list of people, potentials that <laughs> yeah, you put. Don't yeah. you wish. I want, yeah. I want Brady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he announced uh, this morning, uh, first thing I saw on his on his social media, and then obviously it's been taking off everywhere right now. That And I can't believe this. I uh, So I was wrong. I think I, I don't know if I said it on the podcast. I definitely uh, said it on my Instagram post. Oh, you're going to say that he was going to stay at uh, I, the Patriots? Yes. I swore up and down he would never leave the Patriots. Uh, I thought for sure he would retire there. Um, but he wrote uh, he wrote a great uh, thank you to the organization, uh, but also announced that yeah. he would be moving on elsewhere. And rumors are Buccaneers, Raiders, and somebody else are really interested, which is interesting to me because the Raiders just picked up uh, Marcus Mariota from the Titans. Right. And rumor is that- uh, Well, he's unhappy with Carr. We know that much. Yeah, Gruden's not a fan of Carr, and so, which is, by bringing Mariota, and you're basically definitely saying that, that he's going to either, one, compete for the position or, or potentially- just take it. Or, or it's some sort of trade bait so you can get Tom uh, Brady. So I don't know. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know That's what's gonna, what's going to happen. But I was completely wrong. I would have thought for sure Tom was going to stay there. Yeah, but that's going to be big news over the next couple of weeks for sure. Oh yeah. Finding out where, where Brady goes. I mean, I'm sure there's like <laughs> hopefuls that are just like salivating right now to see if, you know, like like Cleveland Browns or somebody like that, you know, out there that have just had nothing but shit seasons. That's it. Honestly, the, the biggest uh, thing that's bothering me with all of this, right. Uh, being trapped at home is there's no sports. That's I know. The, if, we, if I had sports going on right now, it's a struggle, bro. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, this is cool. I get to catch up with all kinds of stuff. So the fact that we don't have that, <laughs> that's been, and I don't know what we're like. How do you do this if, uh, so, you know, uh, MLB just got, I can use all the acronyms, right? Because you know what they are. Yeah. That's how I can't use I know. Hey, it's <laughs> MLB, no more sports NHL, ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know exactly what's happening. Yeah. yeah. So uh, MLB has been postponed. Uh, you know, obviously the NBA has been pushed back now. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Uh, and, are, and is that an asterisk if you win that year? Yeah. What does that mean? So are we, 
and, and then as you as it pushes on indefinite, the whole season's done. So they're not even gonna have like playoffs or you know. I I had heard somebody say they might want to introduce like just the playoffs, so they're still practicing and everything, and then they're gonna compete. Later so according on. to everything that I've read. All your postseason stuff is still on. Like NBA still plans right. to, to have playoffs. So how does that work? But it, that what all will dictate that is how long this goes on for. If this yeah. goes on for, you know, two to three weeks, and then we're we start to go back to normal life, I think that we'll see. Uh, you know, missing a couple weeks of the NBA is not a huge deal. Well, let's talk about the positives to that. Healthy players. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At least the ones that didn't get the coronavirus. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> did you see the Did you see the the meme that I posted? Somebody shared with me, and it went over so many people's head because my DMs got filled up. It was uh, I have to look at the picture so I can tell you who was all on there. So it was you know Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, uh, Rudy Gobert, and uh, Donovan McN- uh, Donovan uh, Mitchell, and then one other person. And it was like. Who who was the uh, the deadliest duo of all of them? Oh yeah yeah yeah. And everybody was oh Jordan, Jordan and Kobe. And yeah, they all were sitting in there. That, that'd be my pick. Right, exactly. But the the joke is that Gobert and Mitchell have the virus. Oh right. <laughs> Went over everybody's fucking head. I had DMs full of people arguing right. over like who is like the best the the best duo in the NBA ever. And I'm like that was the biggest like snap food. I was like when they caught him on camera coughing and like wiping on yes. everybody's gym bags and yes. stuff. Oh yes. my god, dude! <laughs> How bad does he feel so, about that, dude? You know, uh, check this. Out. Okay, so you know what's been going on, obviously with the cruises, right? Yeah. So. This is I didn't know this, um, and if, this is bringing all kinds of attention to them. So, uh, cruise liner is I think it's like a forty something billion dollar industry. Oh, uh, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, and there's three of them that own like seventy five percent of the market, like Carnival and I forget what the other two. Royal Caribbean. Yeah, Royal Caribbean, those, yeah. and then I forget what the other one is. Right. So they and they they dominate the market. So they are looking for uh, are asking for a bailout right now. Because they are just being crippled. I mean, right. I mean, the thing, they, the the ships make millions of dollars on a, on a daily basis, and now everything's being docked and shut down, and nobody's doing that, right? Right. So they're looking for a bailout. Now, here's the irony in all this: they're asking for a bailout. Bailout. Meanwhile, th- for the decades now, they've been operating flying under the radar for like taxes on stuff oh. so, so even though that like 90 percent of the people that you know use all these cruise liners that are coming from ports all over all over the united states and going everywhere they have their you know business you know offshore somewhere else to avoid all the taxation right get on, some tax breaks on oh that. yeah and then of course the gambling laws that they, they have loopholes because of that because they're on the water and shit so they don't really want to open their books up uh, to the government completely. So I, what I'm just curious what was going to happen. I mean, they're, they're asking for a bailout in that. Meanwhile, they have been getting away from paying taxes for so many years. <laughs> so I wouldn't think that they would be one of the first people to get bailed out of this whole situation. Yeah, no. I Yeah, there's there's some flaw there for sure. Oh, my god! We start asking for money. Dude, that's crazy. The first question is from Michael Gee. Can going to failure be beneficial every once in a while? If so, how often? So personal story. So when I was a kid and I started working out, um, I followed the the routines, the bodybuilding routines of the bodybuilders of the 90s and of the the kind of routines that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to write about. And of course, he was one of the most well-known bodybuilders who competed in the 70s. And so my routines were high volume, lots of sets, 15 sets per body part. And I did that for a while, but right around the age of about 15 and a half, maybe 16, my body plateaued uh, really, really hard. Um, then I found a book. Um, it was actually advertised in one of the bodybuilding magazines I was reading, and it was called Heavy Duty, and it had a picture of Mike Menser on it. Now, Mike Menser... Duty. <laughs> thanks, Justin. I was yeah. waiting for you to say that. Yes. <laughs> Can't <laughs> help it, dude. Are you 12? I know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Mike Menser it was this really impressive-looking bodybuilder from the 70s and 80s. Super, super smart dude. So he's a really, really smart guy. And in the book, he talks about uh, training to failure. He said that you know there's a there's a, a signal, there's a kind of like a trip wire that you hit when you work out that sends the muscle building process in motion. He thought it was intensity that did that, so he said we'll just go to failure so that we know we hit that that signal. And, but to to offset the intensity, he only had people doing one set per body part once a week, super low volume. Literally, it was like. One exercise for chest, one for shoulder, one for back, and so on. And I didn't do that again till the following week. Well, believe it or not, I got great response. Now, it lasted about a couple months, 
and then I plateaued super hard again. Um, but I did learn that, you know, that there is some value to manipulating some of these factors. But failure for most people is just too much. It's just too much intensity. Because um, then later on, uh, what I learned was not trained to failure more often. I just got more consistent results always. And for my clients, I almost never train them to failure. And, so. it, and, it, and it doesn't impede the following workout. No. That, right. that That's the thing that I think where I really started to connect it is you get so sore, and I'm sure everyone's been in this position where you've trained so so hard. And let's say I, I had plans that I was training Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week. And let's say I'm running a full body routine and I just crush squats on Monday. And then Wednesday rolls around and I'm still, I'm limping in because the second day after a, mm -hmm. a too hard of a workout is when it's worse anyways. Yeah. So here I am, I'm supposed to be lifting again on squats and my legs, I can barely walk. I, I don't care what you say. Like that's going to hinder that workout. You're not going to be as strong if you're still recovering from how much damage you did on Monday. And so when I backed off of that and I wasn't doing as much damage, it allowed me to not only be more frequent about it, but then also to push myself at a more even consistent right. rate versus this these high peaks and, and lows, right? So I peak real hard with a hard ass intense, and then I have to go super light the next time because I'm so sore. Yeah, and intensity is, is much, it's easier to overdo intensity than almost anything else. It's true. I could literally take a deconditioned person off the street, bring him into our studio, and I could have them do leg exercises every single day so long as the intensity is appropriate, they can do that. I could take someone off the streets that decondition, take them through one set of squats to failure and, and crush them and destroy them, completely destroy them. So for most people, most of you listening right now, stop your sets about two reps short of failure. If you're advanced, going to failure is a tool that you can utilize, but I would even suggest you use that uh, infrequently. Next question is from Ander Beth. Is the term big boned actually a thing or is it an excuse for individuals who are overweight? Oh, absolutely, it's a thing. Well, right? you guys ever see that 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 famous, like, uh, it's like an I mean, image. It's used as an excuse quite a bit. Yeah, though. you guys ever see that? It's like, an, it's not an x ray, but it's got, it's like an image like of an MRI. Sort yeah, of, of an obese fat, person. Yeah, mm -hmm. cells. Next to it's an obese person next to an average weight person. Mm -hmm. And the skeletal structure looks almost identical. Almost identical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. But then, I mean, there is a, if you were to measure, me, measure, measure, <laughs> yeah, 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 if you were to measure my wrist and Justin's wrist, you and I'm a six foot three guy, so I'm a taller guy. I have a lot more muscle and I'm better looking. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, guy. <laughs> <laughs> he just slipped that in there. Yeah, yeah dude. It's, it's, I, it's, I don't agree with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, but let's yet, put that to a poll. But yet he has a much bigger wrist, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, all right. You came back. You came back and gave me something. He's, no, so. I've been working on it. I mean, the, uh, Husky. Husky. Uh, yeah. Semantotypes has, has been debunked, right, which is the, the ecto, meso, and endo morphs, which is what was in our old uh, textbooks. Yeah, the, the, the typical like skinny, tall, yeah. and the like athletic, easily muscular person yeah. and the kind of overweight, chubby person. But the one thing I don't like about them getting rid of those or debunking the semantotypes is there is some truth to that. There are certain people... There are different body types. Yeah, I mean, and, there there are. Are, and there are people that respond very well to building muscle and struggle with losing body fat and the opposite should. Some people respond really, really well, have really fast, healthy metabolisms and burn body fat really quick, but struggle to put on muscle. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I do believe that there is now, and to Justin's point, I, I do believe there's a lot of people that use that as an excuse for being overweight. And what I think those, a lot of those, a lot of the people that fall into that category are the ones that struggle with uh, fat loss. That's a, that's a, it's you know whether it be genetic. It, it's not necessarily directly correlated with their big bones. It's just genetically they have a harder time losing body fat. But what I would always tell those clients that would would complain about that is yeah, but we have an advantage for building muscle. If you're normally the person who struggles with losing weight and you can put on weight really well. Well, if, if you can put on weight really well, you normally can build muscle better than the, the person who, who who has the opposite struggle, right? Yeah, so yeah. there's advantages to both sides. But the whole, the whole like, genetic, um, you know, uh, I'm overweight because of my genetics, I'm uh, heavy because of my genetics, there's some truth to it, but there's also a lot of uh, false to that, okay? So if you go back uh, 100 years, 200 years, that you're not going to see nearly as many obese people as you see today. That's not the result of our genetics changing in that short period of time because over the course of evolution, 100 years is nothing. 
what, what, what that's a result of is lifestyle. And when you see families that are overweight, it's not their genetics either usually. It's usually because they all eat the same way. Mm -hmm. It's their family culture. Product of the environment. Right. So if you see an overweight kid, chances are you're going to have overweight parents. And in the yeah. past that we thought, oh, it's because the genetics of the parents. No, it's their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They have a lifestyle that promotes you know, that kind of obesity. Um, if you can find pictures, you can actually go online and find pictures of uh, circus, uh, you know, they used to call them the circus fat man, right? So back in the day, circuses used to have this really terrible, uh, you know, sideshow act where they would have people with deformities or people who would- Lady with the beard. Yeah, that kind of yeah. stuff. And people would pay to stare at these at these people. And the circus fat man for at the at, you know in the, in the late eighteen hundreds or like whatever three hundred three hundred pounds right they would fit they would walk through Walmart nobody would even bat an eye but back then they were so considered so different that people paid money to look at them yeah um, and it's really because uh, you know times have changed that the, our lives have changed our lifestyle our the calories way we eat. are available that's right so it is often used as an excuse uh, but there is some truth in the sense that some people have bigger bones. Than other people, I would say genetically speaking, you're probably you know that probably will count for something like 20, 30 pound difference, not the 50, 60, 100 pound difference that we see today, where someone says it's my genes. Probably, probably not true. Uh, but as far as your bone structure is concerned, you can't do much to change that, right? And I think if you want to achieve any type of satisfaction with your life, you're probably better off not focusing on the things you can't change mm -hmm. and focusing on the things you can. Well, that's why I, li I liked what you brought up, Adam, in terms of like turning that into a positive. Like I can, uh, you know, more than likely you're going to have the propensity to be able to build muscle if you have that as, you know, like like it's an issue like that you will put on weight easily. Well, let's let's change what kind of weight that is. Right. So, yeah, I think I think a lot of things like that, um, you know, have have another like side to it that people aren't really focusing on enough. Right. Next question is from Brady Thomas 2. What are your thoughts on Jefferson curls? Good, bad, neither? That's the one exercise that I could guarantee if you were to go into a gym and start doing them, <laughs> oh, you, everybody, mayhem. everybody would freak out, yeah, right? Yeah. So this, if you don't know what this is, it's literally a movement where you're holding a weight and you are bending over the what you would think is the wrong way. Like rounded spine. Totally rounding the spine all the way down and then coming all the way up. You're out. basically lifting with your skeleton. Yeah. Now, here's the thing with exercises. Uh, there's a hierarchy of them. Some are more effective than others. Some are more high risk than others. I would say a Jefferson curl is a high risk exercise. Mm -hmm. Does that make it uh, an exercise that has zero value? No. There is some value to a Jefferson curl for somebody that's got phenomenal stability in their spine and good controller spine because it does exercise the muscles that articulate the spine from extension, flexion to extension. But it has to be done really, really controlled, and I would never do a Jefferson curl uh, with a lot of weight. Well, and we've – the type of clients that we would receive, uh, I've never, ever taught a Jefferson curl. I've never taught one. Uh -uh. Yeah, because there's – there's way too many other things that I need to address before I would, before they could even do it properly, much less gain a lot of value from it. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean there is not a, a a gymnast or athlete out there that has got this stability, the strength, the control, the flexibility to do that. Um, and any any exercise that you can perform safely and controlled can be a very good exercise. So mm -hmm. if they have, but. Uh, ninety nine point nine percent of you listening uh, could probably live without a Jefferson the rest of your life and and still build an amazing physique physique and work on a ton of other things that you should be doing. So uh, I wouldn't teach it. Yeah, I and I would think a prerequisite for that. I've actually when I attended the FRC course, I knew maybe one or two people there that uh, that probably could pull it off because they had that kind of articulation and control over each individual uh, spine. And yeah. so it was like, uh, I mean, they had that kind of access and control. You don't see that. That's very uncommon. You have to train your way there uh, in order to then even load uh, your your back with that type mm. of, uh, you, you know, that type of angle and everything else. So it's, it's a very, it could potentially be a very dangerous exercise, but there is a way to, to lead up and, to it. And what makes it dangerous is most people just don't have the control and the stability. Most people, if they did a Jefferson curl, 
what would support them on the way down was the were the was their end range of motion with their spine. Yeah, and that's where you can run into problems. You know, I remember learning this lesson uh, as a, a maybe trainer ten years in the business because when I first became a trainer, there were literally exercises that I was taught that were bad. They would say to me, "Don't do behind the neck pull downs. Terrible exercise. Don't do behind the neck overhead presses." Bad exercise, real bad for the shoulders. It'll, right. it'll always hurt somebody. Don't go all the way down with the bench press. Very bad for the shoulder. Don't go don't go below parallel for a squat. Totally bad for the back and the hips and, and everything else. Later on, I started experimenting with these exercises. And the way I experimented with them is the first one I did was a behind the neck pull down. And I just started real, real light. And I did it in a way to where I could control the position. I could do it in a way where it didn't hurt. And I felt like I was connecting to the muscles. And then as I got stronger doing it, I just noticed greater ranges of motion in my back and my shoulders. I got stronger. Same thing with the behind the neck shoulder press and going all the way down with the bench press. I noticed that if I treated them wisely and I was I, I took my time, allowed my body to connect to these exercises, that because they were new and because they were different, and because I was working in ranges of motion I wasn't used to, I would gain from that. I would gain strength. I would gain muscle. So, you know, when I hear somebody say, uh, this exercise, never do it, it's bad, um, you know, I, I'm always very, very skeptical. I have yet to see exercises that I really think, I look at and I go, nobody should do those. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Twin Sanity Fitness. What are some tips for mental exhaustion from the gym? Oh, boy, change your focus, change yeah. your goals. Or get out of the gym and do uh, something outside. Yeah, That's go outside, saying. man. Yeah, do do something else. I think if you're if you're you know, there's a million and one ways to be active, and there's nothing wrong with if you're bored or burnt out from your modality of training, and you're just sick of the gym and sick of the weights and whatever. Go do go work out in the park or outside or do body weight exercises or use rings or mm -hmm. do other, there's a, so many different ways to be active. That's one of the best ways I've ever found to keep myself motivated was to change the focus from, you know, strength to maybe endurance or mobility or to jujitsu or, or something else. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is to take kettlebells and bring them outside and, and do things outside in nature. And, you know, I've been able to take a mace bell and like you said, the Olympic rings and things to hang over like tree branches and uh, just that new environment, new stimulus, like creates a whole new spark, which then, you know, like inevitably the novelty of that will kind of wear off. You'll find yourself back in the gym. You'll go through that again. It's just, it's just a nice window of change. I think uh, it's just to think like that. This has happened to me uh, a ton of times just in the time we've had this podcast going. Uh, we've only been doing this podcast for five years. Uh, in that time, uh, I took like a, a strength training, bodybuilding type of hiatus where I was 100% mobility focused. I didn't need to be in the gym for that. I was doing a lot of that stuff at home. Uh, then I went on a swimming kick for a while where I was rarely weightlifting, maybe once a week. And then the rest of the time was swimming. And I'm currently playing more basketball than I'm lifting hoops right now. I mean, lifting uh, weights right now. I, I lifted one time last week. I played ball three times. Uh, yeah, there, I you know, uh, a lot of what drove me to weights early on was my insecurities of what I needed to look like. Uh, and, and I, and I occasionally feel that again, like I just did a YouTube video and you know, it's, it's inevitable. I get a, you know, a troll on there that will <laughs> say something about me looking like I don't lift weights and, and it reminds me, it stings and, you and then it, jerks. yeah, it well it reminds me of that, that, <laughs> that insecurity that I had as a kid that that's what drove me into lifting weights. Now I'm, I'm a, uh, way more comfortable with, uh, where I'm at for me, as long as I'm, I'm healthy, I'm flexible, I'm mobile, I'm strong. Um, and right now I'm currently not very athletic. And so a lot of that, my focus, the little bit of weight training I am doing is centered around, uh, athleticism and I'm playing basketball. So yeah, I won't look like a bodybuilder. I won't be impressive, uh, for Instagram or YouTube, but I'll continue to remain healthy and I'm focusing on something else. And I know me, I'll be on that kick just like I was swimming last. I'll be doing it for a while. I'll and see, I, I like to work at something and show myself improvement and prove that I can be consistent with it and and show improvement. And then I like to move out of it. Like I've kind of already uh, reached the pinnacle for myself in bodybuilding. I don't think I'll ever take my body to a more of an extreme than 
uh, what I did getting on stage. And so I just have less of a desire to do that these days. And so I don't need to be in the gym lifting five, seven days a week. Not that I won't do that again, or I don't enjoy that sometimes, but I'm also comfortable moving in and out of modalities uh, uh, to keep myself healthy. And the cool thing about resistance training in particular is it's so versatile. You know what I mean? Like you could do, you could work out with barbells and dumbbells. You could use kettlebells. You could do body weight. There's stuff you could do outside. Stuff, of course, stuff you can do in the gym. You could use bands. Uh, you could use suspension trainers. There's so many different ways that you can train and, and, and work your body out. And, and, you know, look, uh, here's the other thing. We have created many, many workout programs. And part of the reason why we've done this, not only is because there's people have different goals, but it's also for the fitness enthusiast who is a long time, they're, they're going to be working out for forever. So if you're working out forever, you could follow this MAPS program, which like MAPS Anabolic, then MAPS Aesthetic, maybe go to MAPS Performance, MAPS Strong, MAPS mm -hmm. OTF. And they're all very different. And it keeps that spark alive because you're training for different things. So you know, if you want guidance, that might be something I suggest. Try some of our different programs that have totally different, like going from MAPS Anabolic to like, Maps, uh, you know, OTF, uh, very, very OCR. different. Excuse me. OC oh, I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Oh, OCR. What's OTF? Orange Theory, I think. <laughs> hey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OCR, excuse me, Obstacle Course Racing. Um, that's a very, very different workout program, and it's totally – it's 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 different. So for some people, that's fun and exciting. Um, so here's the thing I suggest you don't do. Try not to stop. Like yeah. try to not stop working out because you're bored with what you're doing. Rather than stopping, just change it. I think that's the message we're all trying to convey right now. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. Uh, they're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Mindpumpmedia.com.